Oh, where's my mixing night theme? What you do in the night? <clears throat> Here we go. What you do in the night? What you do in the night? It's mixing night, mixing night with Ken Lewis tonight. What you do in the night? What you do in the night? We got some dog treats from Mazzy to chew on the night. It is mixing night! Woo! We are back, baby. Welcome to Mixing Night. I am your host, Ken Lewis, here with the lovable hellhound, Mazakeen Lewis, holding down security tonight and uh, getting her share of treats. Uh, tonight is an action-packed smorgasbord of audio tricks and treats from sprint mixing to a full mix. We got it all tonight. Turns out I have the weirdest resume in the entire music industry, and a couple weeks ago, I earned my 112th gold record uh, for Kanye West on site. On site. <clears throat> That's on the Yeezus album. Uh, I co-produced alongside uh, Daft Punk and Kanye West, not in the same room with them, just on the same record. Uh, so just pinch me now. That's an amazing uh, credit for me. Thank you very much, Kanye, Daft Punk. Uh, okay, ear training tonight is attack and release compression. Uh, but right before that, I'm going to show you guys how to hear attack and release, and I'll show you what to listen for and how it will affect your settings. Then we move to ear training, and we challenge your new skills that I just taught you. Uh, that's going to probably happen around, what time is that? About uh, 8.30, 8.40, I think. Right in that range, I think I'm, I'm going to do that. Um... Let's see, holy cow. Uh, tonight we are giving away, we've been running a month long giveaway. Tonight we are giving away the truly exceptional tube vocal mic from Ericsson Labs around nine o'clock. We're giving away the EL800 to one lucky winner. Stay tuned to see if it's you. Uh, we are also doing a mixing night Ericsson group buy on the EL800. Uh, get a great discount now for uh, through October 15th. Uh, if you don't win, get in on the group buy. We did an insane shootout last month on the show. If you want to hear how this thing stacks up to a real, some, my exquisite Sony C800G, it was like fucking identical. It was stupid. Uh, I'm also selling my beautiful, my baby. Um, let me stop this. <laughs> I'm also selling my beautiful baby analog SSL Solid State Logic AWS 900 Plus mixing console. It is the end of an era around here for sure. Uh, so much great karma on that desk, and I'm selling it at a great price. You've seen it on the show. It's truly a one of one, and uh, it's it's in great shape. So you know, if uh, you're a uh, kind of a higher level tracking or mix guy out there, and you want a beast of a console, this is the one. Lots of shout outs tonight throughout the night it has been an utterly insane month my i just feel like all i've done is work and sleep and work and sleep um but it's been super productive so first off big shout out to alvin fields and the blessed choir uh for their gold record on kanye west on site uh who knew i had a choir well i have a choir yeah i do and my choir is the best choir, if anybody cares to know. Um, you've heard them on Drake, J. Cole, Kanye, uh, Cleo Fong, PopCon, and many, many others. Um, the Blessed Choir, they're big shout-outs. Those guys are awesome. Uh, so I'm an artist now. <laughs> what? Who knew? Uh, yeah, I'm one half of the group Obscene Stealers uh, with Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss. That's my nickname for him. Uh, we dropped our second single ever today, which is crazy for me. Um, so we dropped a song called Side Effects today. If you're watching, you can make a big impact on our uh, artist careers by simply streaming it, liking it, saving it, putting it on your playlist, listening all the way through, sharing. All of those things really like super help the algorithms push us forward in streaming. And so far, our first First single danger you you guys did your thing because we started hitting algorithmic playlists about 15 percent of our playlisting is algorithmic now which for a first single ever is huge okay on to the show uh side effect shout outs i'm gonna sprint mix this song in a moment uh michael moss the movie trailer uh, boss and my partner in theft he's nominated for a hollywood music in media award next month good luck michael howie weinberg the goat of all goat mastering engineers mastered side effects for us and later on in the show, I'm going to show you my final compared to Howie's master so that you can go just like, oh, 
fuck. I, uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's amazing what he did. Anyway, uh, who else? Jonathan Garcia. Big shout out. Jonathan engineered a bunch on side effects and all of the uh, Obscene Stealer stuff. He's been piling up credits around here. Uh, Brent Colatalo and Medean Mathers co-wrote um, side effects with me. Vincent Van Gill art and Chris Morgan art collaborated on that comic book art, which is like the most insane shit I've ever seen. Uh, it really takes a village to make a great record. So thank you all. And did you know that Mixing Night Audio is making a new plugin? First off, have you seen Greenhouse? Greenhouse! Greenhouse, that's like my favorite thing. And I use the shit out of Greenhouse, like constantly. It's replaced so much. So anyway, Mixing Night Audio is making a new plugin. It's awesome. I don't even, I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, it is going to make you laugh. It, it just sounds amazing. It definitely continues in the spirit of our first uh, plugin, Greenhouse. And... Definitely like a very gamified feel. All of the hallmarks of Green Haas in our next offering. We will be reaching out to Alpha and Beta Squad soon. Hold your positions while we make final assembly. We've been working hard behind the scenes and, and it's coming out so awesome. Uh, and right now I'm going to do a 10 minute sprint mix of side effects. But why sprint mixing, Ken? Why? Why? Um, so, okay, so it's not so I can mix fast or so I can just get out of the studio quicker. Uh, it's really the best rough mix that you can possibly do in 10 minutes or less using volume randomized mixed stems. Volume randomized mixed stems. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, working very fast forces quick decision making. You rely less on the technology and more on the volume balances between tracks. Balance is about 80% of a mix. Sprint mixing teaches you instinctively to just strike great volume balances easily, make five or six rapid decisions in a row, and then pull back and like assess and see where you're at. And then tweak a little bit if you need to, and then go back into rapid fire decision making. That's sprint mixing. And when you see the full mix at the end of the night, you'll see me started basically with a slightly slower sprint mix because that's how I mix. Uh, so. Uh, what else is going on? Before I start the uh, sprint, I'm going to mask up for uh, COVID, which is still raging out there. The new bivalent boosters. Um, tell your parents to get them and maybe get them yourself. They are the only boosters that protect against the Omicron strain, which is the uh, big strain right now. So uh, have your uh, parents and elders uh, get vaccinated. Uh, mask up if you're in big crowded places. Man, COVID is still fucking a lot of people up. Okay, this is Ken Lewis. You have found Mixing Night. Thanks for joining us. This has gone a little slow, but... Oh, sprint mix time again. Where is... Here's the sprint. Um, this is Obscene Stealer's side effects. By the end of the next 10 minutes, this will sound, hopefully like a really great song for like streaming and sync. Uh, we really want to target um, like video games and like sports and shit like that with uh, this. I think I could hear this on like HBO Euphoria, something like this. So you tell me what you think in the comments. This is Obscene Sealer Side Effects 10 Minute Sprint. Uh, and this is Ken Lewis. Love you all.
under my skin when you pull out a mist of pain and Lena Leon on background vocals and arrangements. Of loving with a bend, unintended unintended consequence, unintended
Consequence of loving with a bend on Reckless choices made without a hint of inhibition yeah. Shot to the heart like a needle Always under my skin When you pull out I miss the pain Until you push back in That is Obscene Stealer Side Effects, 10 Minutes Sprint. Thank you for joining us for Mixing Night. I am Ken Lewis with my beautiful co-host, Mazikeen Lewis, holding down treats over there. Uh, let's see. I'm going to dig right into questions. If you're on the chat roll tonight and you got a question for me, fire away. We got Mixing Night uh, people here harvesting questions from the uh, chat roll and sending them right to my screen, off screen right there from all over the world. You'd be surprised. We are really not technically advanced at all, but we do so much with so little. It's incredible. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Eric... Oh my God, this is a big question, Eric. Um, Eric Dangjen, Dangjenwa. Uh, hey Ken, where are you broadcasting from? Wouldn't you like to know? Is this your home studio? Well, this is the basement of the home studio now. The main home studio is being reconstructed currently. Um, hopefully, we'll be in the new control room soon. Uh, wh why is it that the best engineering educators have such a small audience and followers compared to all the knowledge uh, less? Uh, less knowledgeable music producers nowadays have uh, more followers. I think that's... So we've chosen to do a long-form program in the age of TikTok. Well, you know, I always tell people if you're going to swim upstream, expect problems. So we knew that we weren't going to kind of broadcast to millions once uh, the whole world's attention span shifted to, like, TikTok shorts and, and IG reels. Um but we've built a community here that we just love. So we're in it for the community, come what may. And, uh, you know, if uh, I can't help what other people do and who, you know, I'm not mad at anybody for spreading knowledge and, you know, and uh, giving people entertainment. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, ba -ba -ba, Sasha Pax asks, uh, hey, Ken, if you were 20 years old today, what are you saying? What are you saying, Sasha? What are you saying? I'm, I don't look 20. 25? 29? I'm always 29. If you were 20 years... <laughs> hey, Ken. If you were 20 years old today, where in the U.S. would you move to to start your career in music? Los Angeles. Duh. Um, I'm sorry. Los Angeles is the most expensive place on earth. 
but it is also where all of the music happens in America. In fact, right now, uh, uh, Mixing Night co-founder Dom Ravinius is vacationing in Los Angeles, soaking in the uh, beautiful weather they are having right now. And uh, yeah, the place to be is um is la i mean new york's got a scene miami's got a great scene nashville's got a great scene atlanta's got a great scene chicago's got a bit of a scene uh he, like um houston you know there's some there's some spots that you can go and work and and be somewhat successful but the main spot is la and if you if you wanted like if i was doing it from scratch today i'd be in la i would just starve and find a fucking way um okay did you guys know that the uh, uh, there was another astronaut takeoff today? <laughs> there was a launch into space. I'm stringing these words together out of my out of thin air. So yeah, me and Jonathan were watching um, the uh, I guess it was a SpaceX launch, but it was launching NASA astronauts into uh, towards the uh, space station. I think five of them. And uh, man, it is just we don't we take so for granted the incredible technology that powers this world right now and the fact that we can just blast people up into space and anytime we want and there's people living up there currently it's really crazy okay <laughs> from the chat roll uh amath zayan uh asks hey ken i mixed my first punk album sweet uh, is there any way you could give a review on the mix i've been learning from you for for years some feedback would be amazing thanks honestly here's the real deal if if i don't find a way to critique it on the show uh it's probably not going to get done i mean people pay me uh, to critique their shit but i'm not gonna do that right now um but uh the fact of the matter is i do a free show that i make zero dollars off of and we do like three solid days of of staff prep for this show and we make nothing on it except for our plug-in company uh, selling Green Haas. So if you want to support Mixing Night Audio, go buy Green Haas. That is a big driving supporter of this show for sure. Um, but I digress. Uh, uh, sorry. So, yeah. So, dude, I just don't have time. I fucking work seven days a week. So I'm sorry. I don't, I just, I get asked all the time to give feedback. I just don't have time. Um, the Loud Room Studios asks from the chat roll, the Loud Room Studios ask, Hey Ken, why and when do you use certain saturators over others? Um, well, nowadays it's mostly the greenhouse saturator because it just has that. The saturator with the filter combination and the three easy different choices on greenhouse is just so powerful. Um, maybe I can pull it up real quick. Uh, but um, I also like what are some of my favorite saturators decapitator is great um the what did i just get uh you know there are just so many the thing is you know all of them kind of have slightly different flavors and you really have to spend a little bit of time with the ones that you're going to incorporate oh the ssl saturator i, I really like that shit knocks um uh but you really have to spend some time learning kind of the strengths of this kind of stuff. Like when I want a multi-band saturator that I can affect different bands individually, um, I go for the uh, FabFilter Saturn II. Um, I can split it into six different bands. You can assign different saturation types to each band, um, all that kind of shit. But that's like more complicated than most things need. Most things, let me listen to this vocal and distort it a little bit. Of loving with a bend Reckless choices made without a hint of in a bitch Quince of loving with a bend Quince of loving with a bend Reckless choices made without a hint of in a bitch Quince Reckless choices made without a hint of inhibition. 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 
Fuck, that's super dumb. <laughs> So, all right, let me give you some green haas secrets uh, while I'm doing it right now. So if you see, I've pulled back on the sundial. That is a wet dry for just the saturator. It's not a wet dry for the whole plug-in. It's just a wet dry for how much feeds into saturation and how much passes through um, and gets recombined clean with the saturator. So that's what the sundial does. Then you hit the filters before the sundial, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, and the heat is like drive into the uh, distortion. And I just scrolled through distortions and I was like, okay, this one's moody as fuck. And then the flowers here are all different modulators and they all sound, each one of these sounds great on something um, and probably terrible on other things. So uh, you, you, you know, experiment with them, but listen to the width this thing gets. Um, let's see. I swear Greenhouse is like solves so many problems for me, but the greatest thing that Greenhouse does for me is it solves vibe and it just allows me to just go like, oh, this sound is a little bit too vanilla. How do I want to vibe it? Well, Greenhouse, of course. Um, so it's a really easy, it's almost all of my previous like vibe type plugins are almost all gone. Uh, I just don't use many of them anymore. Um, uh, uh, Jimmy Larice from the chat roll asks, hey Ken, uh, uh, am I right in hearing that when you mixed uh, my song Late at Night, which I just mixed for Jimmy Larice, um, you used Green Haas on my vocals? Yes, I believe that's probably true. I, I use Green Haas on lead vocals all the time. And usually when I do, it's not like super in depth like this. The depth on the watering can is usually somewhere around here to up here if I want a little bit more chorusy and and something like that. Um, but, uh, um, but, uh, so, uh, sorry. Um, if I want it a little bit more coarsey, I can put the watering can up. If I want it really, really wide, uh, I can go the watering can full wide. Um, and, uh, uh, all right. I am going to go to Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, and uh, see what we got popping with Marcus Manderson. Uh, he's going to show you all how to use Heaviosity Foundations. He cooked up a super dope beat in a matter of like three minutes with the shit. So he shows it to you, cooks up beat, shows you how to use it. Uh, and here is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. Well... 
I don't see him there. Don't show the screen. Um, Marcus Manderson, Mixing Nine, Man of Mystery, yeah. Marcus, see, I just gave you your own theme song, brother. Marcus Manderson, we love him around here. All right, here comes Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night, Man of Mystery. What's good, everyone? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night, Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night, Man of Mystery moment. In this Mixing Night, Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk all about Heaviosity Foundations because this is Producer Month. We're going to talk about this free series of instruments that you can use in your musical productions. So Heaviosity is a great company. They make a lot of great stuff for orchestral. Um, they, they are really big in the uh, trailer space and they take some of those elements from their higher end libraries and they put them in this foundation series. And currently we have four versions out of the foundations. You have Heaviosity uh, Foundations Piano. You have the Heaviosity Foundations Staccato Strings. You have the Heaviosity Foundations Synth Bass and the Heaviosity foundations nylon guitar i'm going to play a little bit of each as you can see with the plugins here it's not really a lot going on this is the ui right here uh, on this side and you can see you have the piano you can actually layer a texture in so this is what the texture sounds like by itself so like a pad and then this is what the piano sounds like and then you can layer all that together and you can adjust the panning there at the bottom. Uh, with the plugin itself, you have this option where you can adjust the envelope and the start and end time of the samples, or you can have it ran uh, be random. With this option, you have different sort of gates and arps you can layer. Uh, then you also have effects. You have a reverb, delay, punch, which is a little bit more like uh, saturation, compression going on there. So you have a lot of effects going on in this free plugin. And then you also have a series of presets. So for this one in particular, you have Foundations Piano. We have Clean Soft Pianos. Sounds great. We also have uh, Reflected Pianos. I won't play all of them. The next one we have in the series is a staccato strings, um, which if you don't know what a staccato is, it's basically short strings, um, violins, violoncellos, uh, just a short sounds like this. Uh, this is the strings by itself. And then this is the texture by itself. Uh, the texture actually sounds like a reverberated pizzicato. So you can layer that with the staccato strings. Um, uh, and again, you have similar settings, uh, the amp, uh, amp envelope, you have the gate arp. Uh, I didn't mention it in the last plugin, but you do have the gate and arp settings for both the strings and the texture. And then you also have effects there. Um, so that is staccato strings. Next, we have synth bass. Uh, I also didn't mention the presets. Again, you have a bunch of presets here that you can go through. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. Next, we have foundation synth bass. And if you notice, instead of texture, you have growl over here. This is the growl. So more like high pass things. And then the bass over here. Uh, I'm playing chords. It's supposed to be a bass, um, but it can be whatever you want. So um, you can also use it for like synth uh, pads and things. And last but not least, what's currently out is the nylon guitar uh, in the foundation series. We have guitar and texture. Again, uh, similar settings. We'll just play this sound. I really like that sound. And again, similar settings over here with your envelope. Uh, uh, <laughs> envelope, the gate, ARP, and the effects. So what we'll do here, uh, that's basically the overview. I'm going to do a quick idea. You know how we do. Uh, let's call it eight bars, and we'll do a quick idea using all these sounds. We'll start with the guitar since we're here now. One, two, three, four. We'll go to the bass. Then we're going to do strings. Uh, and that is, I'm just quantizing these to keep quantizing them to keep clean them up a little bit. Uh, let's see. And a quick production trick, uh, I can layer it on the MIDI itself, but I'm just going to duplicate the track and I'm going to move these up an octave and I can just la label this 8VA, which is sort of the musical notation for up an octave. So I just move this up an octave. So the second time it plays around with those okay. staccato strings, you'll hear the octave higher and it'll sound like this. What else is going to happen? Dominic keeps telling me it's 
The octave? And last but not least, we'll just add some piano stuff and then we will get out of here. Here we go. Again, some crazy notes going on there, but let's play this grand opus created with only heavy Oxy foundation. <laughs> Uh, that's a quick way to create a quick cue. Uh, remember the sync episode from last month. This I could be use. Uh, I can apply it to sync. I can send the different individual stems, and they can just use a piano track or just use a guitar track. Um, so you can actually flip a uh, free plugins just like this and use it in your sync licensing endeavors. So there you go. Uh, this has been Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Matter Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Matter Mystery moment. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right, all right, peace. Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, great segment as always. Okay, um, what's, I'm gonna go to attack, release, compression. Um, bom, bom, bom. let's close this. Where is attack, release, compression? Well, I should have learned my stream deck before the show, shouldn't I? Um, can't find it. One sec. Oh, come on. Here we go. So I'm going to teach you guys what attack release compression sounds like, and then we're going to do ear training. God damn it. Come on. This fucking mouse. I don't know if it's the new Mac Studio or if it's this mouse. It's not the mouse because two mouses have done it. Or if that's because one of this uh, this SSL UF8 controller is in between the Mac Studio and the mouse, but double clicking this shit works about half the time. And I mean, it's 2022 with a brand new fucking Macintosh line. Come on, Apple, Jesus! Back to the show. Hey, okay. How to hear compression? So I basically pulled up uh, the ear training that we did in January, which was similar, uh, which was this. And I played, I want to start with this loop because it feels like kind of a swing loop to me. Um, and I, I want you to pay attention to uh, pre and post compression. Uh, and the different way, it, li definitely listen to the hi-hat. Listen to the different ways the hi-hat changes the compression. And so every single one of these compression settings, you're either going to have an attack on 10, which is really slow or uh, an attack on zero, which is really fast, and a release on either 10, which is really slow, or zero, which is really fast. And I'll show you each compressor as they go by so that you can catalog the characteristics, and I'll tell you as we go what those things are. Uh, so um, here's the dry signal, no compression. So what you notice with this, slow attack, fast release. That's going to let all of the transients through, and then it's going to clamp down right after that transient goes through. It's going to say, oh, I'm lazy. Now I'm woken up. And it's going to clamp down on that, and it's going to hold it down until it decides to um, uh, that the sound goes back up beyond the threshold, and then it's going to start letting it go. Um, and if it's a slow release, it's going to let it go so slowly that by the time the next hit comes up, it's probably already re-engaging before it's fully released. So slow, uh, slow release tends to result in a little bit quieter, uh, but you can make that up on the output knob. 
uh, and fast attack tends to uh, re result in more transient, more lead transient uh, on whatever sound you're trying to accomplish your transient with. So if you want it punchy, slow attack. And you hear the decays go away pretty quickly. And then you hear that, the, you listen to how loud the hi-hat gets. And that's because the, the compressor is now released enough to make the hi-hat really loud where it pulled way back on the kick and snare. Hear those hi-hats coming up? Yep, next one is uh, fast attack, slow release. So this is gonna murder the transient. You're not even gonna get the transient anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, where do we go here? Uh, and it's gonna hold the whole thing down. So this is gonna be like the most reduction of any compression setting. And you see I've compensated on the output by seven. Oh, that's seven too. I don't know. Listen to how I go from fastest to slowest attack and how it changes the loop. This is all slowest release. Slow. Fast. So fast crushes your transient. Sometimes you want that. That's a desired effect a lot of times when you just want a really flat line of signal out you know, fast attack, but usually with a fast attack, I often do a, a fast release um, and just try and keep the waveform kind of at one real uh, singular volume. Listen to the difference in fast attack and release. Every hi-hat, every kick, every snare is all the same volume. This, the room comes up really fast. Listen to how much room you get compared to if I dial the release back to slowest, how little room you get. See, it's really punchy because you have that, uh, I don't know, the leading attack just flattening everything out and making it really loud at first, but then the release is just like, I'm going to take my time. So ear training, you're going to have to hear whether it's fast attack, fast release, fast attack, slow release, slow attack, fast release, or slow attack, slow release. And each of these I have set up, let me give you a different example just to let you go through it one time. Each of these I have set up as a, we'll do the guitar. Where is it? Here we go. I'm gonna play you the uncompressed and then I'll show you each of these. You just have to mind which compression setting is what. We're gonna start with no compression, then the first compressor is gonna be fast attack, fast release, then we're going to ear training. Fast attack, fast release. A lot of sustain, not much transient. Slow attack, fast release. Tons of attack, comes up really fast. Sounds like slow attack, slow release. That very first, here, Here's how you can tell you have a slow attack, slow release. Your very first transient is loud as hell, and then the whole thing clamps down. And whenever there's a long gap, it comes up a little bit, and that first transient is loud, and then it pulls back down again. That's uh, slow attack, slow release. And then the last one is fast attack, slow release. That just holds everything in one place, doesn't let it move at all. All right, let's go to ear training and see if any of these skills have just sunk in, people. All right, where is my ear training? Boom. All right. 
Whew, how are you guys doing tonight? Thanks for uh, hanging on Mixing Night with us. It's a great night to be working in the studio. It's been an insane, insane month, but so, so good. Uh, might be out in L.A. in November with Michael Moss doing uh, the Hollywood Awards and going out and meeting tons of music supervisors and things like that. You know, obscene stealers were really trying to get into sync world. Okay. Um, the ear training worksheet, uh, they can put it on uh, the, your screen in the control room. Um, so the first one of each five, the first one of each group of five is dry. Uh, and then one through four of each of these is uh, a different compression setting. And I just go through, I just scramble the four different possibles. There are never a repeat. It's never going to be fast attack, fast release, fast attack, fast release, right in a row. You're not going to get that on the same sound. You're going to have one of four. You got to basically figure out which one is which. You can kind of take your best guess on the first one, scratch it in, and then the second time listening through, get evaluate it and go like, is this really? Am I losing the attack? Is it emphasizing the attack? Okay, is it that first clamp down, then it goes away, or is it clamp down and it immediately comes back? Okay. And you start asking yourself these questions, and then you learn what this stuff sounds like, and then it becomes so second nature while you're mixing to just go like, oh, shit, this is how I want this to sound. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, damn, there it is. Especially with that distressor, that thing is amazing. Um, shout out to Dave Durr. Uh, hey, Dave, I hope I get to see you at AES. Uh, okay, we're starting with number one, piano dry, and then we're into it. One. Two. Three. Next group, dry. One. This is five. Six. Seven. Eight. The guitar dry. One. This is two. Three. OG drums dry. This is four. All right, it's Grizzly Adams dry. 
Did I run all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine? Now I'm not right next to you. Just said I'd run all red lights One. from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Now I'm not right next to you. Just said Two. I'd run all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Now I'm not right next to you. Three. Just said I'd run all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Now I'm not right next to you. Just said I'd run Four. all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Now I'm not right next to you. Just Sorry, I'm a little out of sorts tonight. I totally forgot. Anybody who doesn't know what the fuck is going on, we're doing ear training in the description of the video that you are watching right now. Just click below there. In the show description, there are ear training follow-along sheets. Um, so you can follow along, you can put your answers right in it. It's best of 40 points tonight, um, two listens through, and then the big reveal. So I'm going to give you one more listen through. Again, the first group of each five is dry, and then the next four in a row are some combination of fast attack, fast release, fast attack, slow release, Slow attack, fast release, and slow attack, slow release. One of those four, they don't repeat. Each of those starts with dry and then one of the four different compression types. Uh, so we're going to go back to the top and start out one more listen through with dry. Uh, get the ear training worksheet if, uh, if you don't have it. And here we go. One. Two. Three. Four. Dry snare, dry snare. One. Two. Three. Four. Here comes dry guitar. One. Three. Four. Drums dry. One. Three. Four. Squizzy Adams dry with reverb. Did I run all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine? Now I'm not right next to you. Just said I run all red lights. From here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Now I'm not right next to Two. you. Just said I'd run all red lights. From
from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Hear those decays come up. Next to you, just head out three all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Hear those decays. Not right next to you, just head out four all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Now I'm not right next to you, just. Hope you guys were listening on the decays on those reverbs of how they were emphasized and unemphasized by which release time was set. Boom. Listen back uh, on the big reveal. Um, are you guys showing the big reveal on the control room or do I show it here? Uh, all right. You guys are showing the big reveal. Here is uh, number one, piano one. Slow attack, fast release. Two, slow attack, slow release. Three, fast attack, slow release. Four, fast attack, fast release. How you doing so far? Here's the dry snare. Snare one is fast attack, fast release. Listen to the tail of this thing come right back at you. Fast attack, slow release. Less tail. Slow attack, slow release. Real punchy. Slow attack, fast release. Real punchy too. But with a tail. Punchy with a tail. Uh, here is the guitar. Number one is fast attack, slow release. Number two is fast attack, fast release. Listen to the little decays come way up. Slow attack, fast release. Slow attack, slow release. You can really hear the release time in the decays. If the decays come back at you fast, it's a fast release time. If the decays kind of are understated, it's a slow release time. That's kind of how you know. All right, uh, drums, number one is slow attack, slow release. Two is fast attack, slow release. Three is fast attack, fast release. Four is slow attack, fast release. So really with attack time, a real slow attack time lets the transient through and lets drums be punchy. A real fast attack time clamps down, clamps down on your transient and kind of elongates things uh, and makes things squashier but louder. Um, okay, I uh, hope that's a fair assessment. Um, here is Grizzly number one. Uh, this is slow attack, slow release. All of the decays will be underemphasized and he'll be real, his vocals will be real punchy. Did I run all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine? Now I'm not right next to you. Just said I run all red now listen to the difference here. Slow attack, so he's going to be real punchy and kind of in and out a little bit. Um, but the release, you'll hear all the decays come up. Did I run all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine? Now I'm not right next to you. Three is boom. Fast attack, fast release. You'll hear real squashy, but all those uh, releases will come back again. Did I run all red lights? From here to get to you if the clock strikes nine. Now I'm not right next to you. Just hit And then four is fast attack, slow release. So it squashes it and it won't ever let those tran the decays come back. Did I run all red lights from here to get to you if the clock strikes nine? Now I'm not right next to you. Just 
So if you need to de-emphasize the reverb on a committed stereo track, fast attack, slow release, there you go. Boom, how did you all do? Sorry, I'm running a little behind schedule. Um, post up on the chat roll and tell me uh, who did best on ear training. I would love to hear it. We are launching a new beat challenge tonight. Whoa! I think by mid-month I'll repost it on, on the YouTube and we'll get a sponsor. I think I know who the sponsor is going to be, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, so I need to lock that down and re-announce mid-month. But any of you guys that want to be on it now, here... Where is the starter, is it? here? Oh, that's why. I'll get this right. Here is the starter for the new beat challenge. Woo! That is, you can find that starter in the description of the video that you are watching right now. Go get that starter. Go cook up some fire. I promise I will find you guys some fire prizes and I will play the top 10 or 15 or so DJ style on the next show. It's going to be a great throwdown. And the cook up on that was done by super producer Dom Ravinius, who happens to be hanging in LA right now. Uh, Dom cooked that one up. Man, that dude is so fucking talented. It is ridiculous. Uh, and he's, um, yeah. He's such an exceptional dude. Um, okay. Ba -ba -ba. New beat challenge, Marcus Manish. Let's do the giveaway. Holy cow. And then we got to go straight into. Oh, I know I'm I'm missing that mastering. I'm going to do the mastering thing real fast. Um, crap. And I wanted to show. Oh, I'm going to miss some things tonight. So. Um, all right. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's do the. Uh, uh, we gave away an Ericsson Labs. Do we have a banner for that? Are you guys showing the banner for that in there? I hope so. We we are giving away a. The, the quality of this. Vocal tube mic is exceptional. We did a shootout last show against my pristine vintage Sony C800G, worth a blue fortune. And that shit was indistinguishable from my C800. I could not tell the difference myself. Switching back and forth in real time, we played it live for you guys so you guys could hear it for yourselves. And we are giving one of those exact microphones away right now. Uh, so... Um, we had, holy cow, we had total entries. It says it's 14,284 entries, but it's, it's not quite that much. Everybody could enter like two, you know, several times if you went and, you know, did this or that anyway. Um, but a lot of, man, we had thousands of entries. So whoever gets this, good luck. All right. The winner of the Ericsson Labs EL800 Mixing Night Tube Mic Giveaway is... Ba -ba -ba! Luis Pessoa! Luis Pessoa uh, from Portugal. Oh, S. Espo sende Portugal. I can't speak uh, Portuguese, so I'm faking it. <laughs> I'm not even trying to fake it. Uh, Luis Pessoa, congratulations. You have just won an Ericsson EL800. Uh, we'll get to you after the show and uh, coordinate with you um, and make sure that you get your, your gorgeous, beautiful microphone. Also, we are doing an Ericsson uh, EL800 group buy. Um on uh, that same microphone. So if you didn't win and you heard it last week and you're like, you know what? I really actually want to get that microphone no matter what. We are in the middle of a group buy right now. Um, and uh, uh, you can get in on it. Why is this? Here we go. Okay. Sorry. So I want to play you just a minute of my friend's uh, my friend, my dear, dear friend, Steve Nathan, who is just brilliant at so many things, uh, being human most of, of all, he 
is directing this new show on a new um, network called Mediflix.com. Uh, the show is called The Heart of St. Francis, and he's the director of the show. My former employee here, Cooper Anderson, who held it down here for around a decade, music supervised on this. God, I love seeing my people go on and do great. Cooper has had a great run. Steve Nathan, man, I'm just so impressed. And the end credits of season are, are of uh, episode two, they used a song that I co-wrote with Rika Bloomgarden called Oxygen. So this is a little sample of Oxygen at the end of episode two. I love this usage so much. They played it like an orchestra. They played it well. And that's because I'm here to tell you my story. So many of my favorite people working on this show. Coops, coops. I love all these people dearly. Um, congratulations on the heart of St. Francis and my friend Steve Nathan. Uh, if you like medical shows, go check out the heart of St. Francis. It'll pull your heartstrings so hard, man. It's you know it's one of those shows it's like you just fall in love with the people and the doctors and all that, and you just want to know what happens. Um, okay, I'm going to go on to the full mix. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late with it, but I'm going to mix so fast and eloquently you won't even believe your eyes. Uh, I know I am missing something. We just did the giveaway, attack, release, sprint mix, intro, uh, Marcus Manerson, new beat challenge, Rory. I'm going to try and play the Brian Pepin uh, segment at the very end of the show. Thank you very much, Brian Pepin. Okay, tonight is full mix night. I'm doing a full mix faders down to finished. Um, and Rory Miller produced this. The song is called Ghost. The artist is Bella. I don't know how to pronounce this. Chessness? Chessness? I don't know. Bella. So, uh, Bella singing Ghost. Um, beautiful song. Rory gave me carte blanche to do whatever the fuck I want with it. So, guess what, Rory? I am digging the fuck in. Uh, I've, I kind of gave it a once over before the show, so I have kind of a decent idea of what I'm going to do. Um, and so I put together some cheat codes here that you guys can't see, but I made notes of what I want to be able to kind of plow through and show you guys. So without further ado, first thing I do at the beginning of any, any mix that I do is I sit and I listen to the rough mix three, four, five times. So we're going to listen to just a minute or so of it. I'm going to skip around so you can hear different pieces of the vibe and what we're listening for with the rough mix is it's a general gut check of direction it tells me like they generally think oh the vocal should be dry not bathed in reverb the drum should be really punchy not kind of you know punching up front not squashed and in the back um, you know that kind of thing it gives you a general gut vibe check and then you as a mixer and a producer or whoever in this case I can wear both hats I have to go, well, do I like the direction of the rough or do I really just want to take it in a different direction, come what may? Um, that's what I'm going to do tonight. Um, the rough is dope, but I hear a, so much potential in the song and I want to pull it out really fast. Uh, and the first, so uh, I'm just going to get right to it. The first, these aren't problems. These are things that me as a producer who has no tie emotionally to this song at all. So I can I can approach it from a purely unemotional uh, connection and go, what is best for the song? What do I personally think the very best representation of this song is? Well, I'll tell you what the best representation in a TikTok world is not a four and a half minute song. So my first thought was, well, how can I shorten this? Let's listen the... I think the intro is like 30 seconds. So it's like this big, washy, wavy intro, 30 seconds of that, and then um, it goes into the vocals. This is, this is the rough mix. Never give up on the race, hold 
Okay, so here we have the chorus, and in, in the original arrangement, hits at about 107 into the song. Is, if you want streaming uh, or radio, that is an absolute suicide length, unless you are just a real niche audience. So you just really want to kind of get to it. You know, if you already have a built-in fan base who's waiting for you to just drop whatever your next thing is, you can get away with whatever the fuck you want to get away with. If you're like Obscene Stealers and you're trying to catch ears, new ears for the first time and hold on to them, if you notice Obscene Stealers, man, that song drops and we are in it. Line one in second one or two. Um, and, uh, and, and then we take them on a journey. And so I'm going to take this more on a journey. There's a lot of dead air in the beginning. Um, I'm going to cut all but two bars of that. Here's two bars. All right, so I'm going to just get rid of that whole piece of the intro, that brings the start of the song up to 29 seconds. Much, much better. I'm going to put a very short fade in to all of these tracks so they have a little bit of, like, ramp up to them. Up oh, here. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to have to mix this before I start editing the uh, arrangement. So here's what I'm, I'm about to do to the mix. I just lopped off the entire intro washy part and you'll hear how it comes out. The next thing I'm going to edit is this last, I think it's four bars, uh, boom, 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 here. Four bars of the verse, and I'm going to take the verse straight into the chorus and get rid of See, this is kind of just, it's dead air. You know, a, first, a listener for the very first time is going to hit this section and fall asleep. And then you're into the chorus, but that like 10 seconds of waiting for the chorus is not a buildup. It's like uh, check your watch time because it. this is a TikTok world. Attention spans are really, really, really short. This isn't me saying it. It's just me acknowledging what the industry is like if you want. And I'm not even talking about being on TikTok and getting streams and views on TikTok at all. I'm saying the TikTok effect of life has shortened everybody's attention spans and they're just not paying attention. So you can't bore them, any, especially as a new artist. All right, let me sprint mix the fuck out of this thing for the next 10 minutes. Um, and uh, then I'm going to come back to you and uh, uh, start plowing through the rest of the mix um if you got questions fire away on the chat roll um hey eduardo larez great to hear from you dude uh eduardo larez is on the chat roll he and i worked together in new york uh in the late 90s a bunch wow fucking a uh that's a blast from the past um all right uh i'm gonna sprint mix this i'm not sprint mixing it's semi sprinting you'll see um, man, this fucking SSL controller is bananasville. Watch, if you see the overhead cam, what I'm doing with the SSL controller, it's just so effective. Um, all right, here we go.
listen to the width in your mix, especially if you have headphones on right now or you're sitting in the middle of your speakers. Listen, so instead of instead of widening the mix bus out way, way wide, and a lot of people do that and it's so fucking noticeable, don't do that. Take one or two elements that are best suited for it and make those hella wide in your mix. And here's a perfect example. And I'm not even making this whole sound wide. I'm taking one general frequency band of this sound with the BX Digital. This is an MSEQ, middle side. So this controls only what's dead center. Uh, the side controls only what's on the sides. So if I'm uh, boosting only the sides here by over 40 dB at 600 hertz, uh, that is all of that warm reverb and stuff that's pouring off of that guitar is all being warmed up and widened out and emphasized. Uh, and just listen to the perceived wideness of the entire mix when I bypass and unbypass this plugin. <laughs> So you just hear the perception just get m just massively wider, and that's one band at 600 hertz at plus four. That's it. You do this for a couple others. Let's take um, maybe that pad. Uh, bu -bu here we go. Um, bum -bum -bum. I love low warm pads for this exact effect um, because... Uh, they can kind of get way outside of the speakers without really doing much damage to your phase coherency. Uh, or famous last words, kid. listen to that in the mix it sounds out of phase in solo but not in the mix everybody says can how do you get your mixes so fucking wide mm, pay attention pay attention uh <laughs> cheat codes galore all right, what is next on the mixes right? Um, boom. Oh, let's work on these acoustic guitars for a minute. Usually I have put the vocals and almost everything in long ago by now, but I'm kind of going a little bit step by step and a little piecemeal, and then I'll get to editing, and it's all going to come together. These, these acoustics are a little unruly to me. First, I'm just going to see if the SSL compressor uh, is going to be par for the course. Slowing down the release a little bit from fastest helps. The more you do it, the more it smooths the sound out. Listen, the sound's a little bit distorted with fastest release, and then I smooth it out a little bit, and it uh, and it the distortion goes away.
And then all I'm gonna do is copy this setting over to here, and I'm done though. I'm using a slow attack fast release on this one. I'm filtering out the low end. I want to just kind of focus it right in the in the mid range. Um, oh, they're saying they're curious. Uh, SR1B on the chat roll asks, "Hey Ken, I'm curious to know why you look at the screen while turning knobs on the SSL controller." So my plugin is on the screen right in front of me. So I don't know. It's kind of like more habit um, uh, trying to teach you because I'm trying to explain visually what's going on, and it's just a good reinforcement for my brain to see what's going on as I'm telling it to you. <laughs> So that's why when I'm normally mixing, the beauty of the SSL controller and the, the UF8s and the UC1 is that I look at the screen about half as much and I touch the, the mouse about less than half as much. And you can do so much of your work just from the controllers here. It's really amazing. And it feels like mixing on a console again. It's, it's stunning what they did. It's so cool. I don't, it works for an old school head like me. Like, I love it. got a ringy frequency right in the mids. I'm going to see if I can kind of more broadly reshape this a little bit uh, with Pultec Pro Legacy, my favorite EQ on the planet. I'm going to pull out a little bit of 3K, maybe 4K, I'm not sure. Hold me close, keep me far. I never meant to be a ghost. Send your love. Say you're fine. You always needed her the most. Settle down. Dig your grave. I never meant to be a ghost. I never meant to be a ghost. Hold me close. Keep me far. I never meant to be a So when I set vocal compression, I tend to try and make sure that the compressor is always working. So when she's singing a little bit softer, the, the needle's just flickering a little bit. And when she's really digging in on the, ah, then it's pulling way back and, and, you know, and the end result is that her dynamic range goes from down here to way up here. And then all of a sudden it just goes from, you know, down here to up here, just a little bit. So, uh, and then if you really want to get rid of the dynamics, and I often do, um, you can uh, follow the Kramer Pi with, where is my distressor? Where have you been all my life? I usually go like medium, slow attack. Uh, um, cause I want just like the leading edge of those transients. It helps get the vocal a little bit punchy without it coming in and out so much. 
Uh, and the I like the fast release because it just keeps the vocals sitting really in one range. Now, these controls are kind of a mystery to most. Um, me too. Uh, so this is a high pass um, side chain. So what that says is, I think it's probably 100 hertz. Everything under 100 hertz, the detector ignores. So the compressor reacts to it as if that that material in the sub doesn't exist. Um, but it passes clean audio. Um, that's called a side chain detector. Uh, this, um, the middle thing here, that just focuses, I think that just focuses more of the energy on the mid-range and it, um, and it makes it operate a little bit more uh, smoothly. Hey, baby girl, how you doing? Lay down, lay down. There you go, Mass. Lay down, baby girl. Good girl, she is such a sweetie pie. Um, <laughs> where was I? Uh, um, can't remember. Anyway, so Kramer Pie and then Dist Distressor is a pretty normal combination for me, usually followed by a DSer. So you see, I want to keep the perception of dynamic range. It still feels to me like she's a dynamic singer. You can feel the soft and loud in her performance, but if you look on a scope, it's pretty flattened out. And, uh, and that really helps you just be able to find the one place on the fader that works for the hook. It, you can sync it down into the mix a little bit more than you can without compression. And you can get it sitting right on top of the music without really going anywhere. And then if you need to do little rides from there, then you do little rides. You know, I'm not opposed to little rides. Um, all right. So here we go. I think this needs soothe. Still a little mid rangey for me. There's this just piercing. Normally I might go after it with like a real tight band EQ, but we'll see uh, um, what this does. Pretty good. Uh, where here we have. Um, let's add some reverb to lead vocal. Get the vibes dialed up a bit. That's pretty nice. Valhalla. That's the stock from Valhalla. It sounds great. I'm gonna see if uh, H delay ping pong sounds good. That fills space really nice. Let's listen to that. Hold me close, keep me far. I never meant to be a ghost. Send your love, say you're fine. You always need it. So you notice those come back really dark, right? So I have trimmed all of the high end off down to 1.7 kilohertz. Uh, I took all the analog noise off. That's just noise. Turn that shit off. Um, and uh, took the feedback down a little bit. So you just get a few bounce backs. But here's the real key is this low, pa uh, the low pass. So I'm trimming off the high end. So all of those sibilances that are bouncing around aren't hitting your ear from the left and the right. And the listen to how this bounces around with the sibilance on it with no filter. Hold me close. Keep me far. I never meant to be a ghost. Send, send, send. That starts putting my attention on what's happening on the sides instead of what's happening in the middle. I want the, the listener's attention focused on that lead vocal. I just want to spice it up a bit, put it in a space, vibe it out a little bit, make it feel great, but keep the, the, the focus on the lead vocal, not on the effects that I'm putting on it, unless I want them to be like, oh shit. That that fucking hall she's in sounds incredible. You know, the, you, you get that sometimes. Hold me close, keep me far. I never meant to be your 
So you see I'm fast attack, uh, I'm actually peak compressing, I meant fast attack, let's hear that. So I'm fast attack, fast release compressing this bass, and what I'm doing is that La the high note is a little bit loud, so I'm bringing up, um, I'm putting the compression first. I'm, uh, I'm compressing that lead note, that pop note, down closer to the bass note. And then on the EQ after it, I'm boosting up some of the bass, uh, and I'm boosting up a little bit of the mid at, at 850 and at 100 hertz both on bell curves i'm kind of doing tight boosts at both of those just to give a little bit of like the point of attack of the bass so that the ear can really pick it up that's what this one's doing right here and the 850 is doing and then the weight of it how big and woofy it is is this one right here um Let's see. Uh, from the chat roll, producer Third Son asks, Hey, Ken, would automation the whole way give you a more natural sound rather than compression? Fuck no. Hell fucking no. Um, everybody thinks that automation is the natural way to do things. And hey, if it works for you, great. I'm not trying to tell you not to do your thing. For me, I think most of the heavy hitters on the planet rely mostly on compression and balances first and on automation last. It is, to me, a complete and utter waste of time to sit there and draw in automations or to sit there and try and write in automations. I do it sometimes. I do it on, like, delay throws and shit like that. I might do it in moments where I need to, and usually I do it on the faders on the controller, but... 
but really I've in my whole career I've never done a lot of automating and uh, other than like drops and shit so um, yeah I find it a waste of time um, okay uh, I wanted to cut this verse down let me do that right now Greenhouse! Here's with and without. Once in a while, I remind myself It never hurts to sit on the shelf Subtle or, or extensive. This is a fucking vibe box, man. God, I love it. Uh, let's hear just delays in the verse, and then that big reverb can maybe come in in the, in the hook. Sick and tired. See, at first I put it right through that, and I was like, why is that so messy? It was because I left the uh, low pass open. So uh, all of those sibilances were smacking the left and right of the speakers until I turned that shit right back down. Boom. All right, let's hear it again. Sick and This is the section I'm gonna remove. So after on the shelf, that four bars before the hook is gonna be gone. Oh, the last, the last bar, I think I'm just going to break down um, and cut the drums. Let me leave, see what that sounds like. It never hurts to sit on the shelf. Still a bit big. Let's see if maybe these two. On the shelf.
Matt Thrasher from the chat roll asks, uh, hey, Ken, what kind of meters do you use, stereometers, phase, linear, etc. do you use? The only meters I really use are the um, FGX. <sighs> so the FGX tells me I don't use it. It's a fine compressor, like it's a fine mix bus box. It is. It sounds good. It's about 99% as good as the other things that I use. But the meter is the fucking meter. This thing, the RMS, when my final mix is dialed in to between minus 7 and minus 9 on something a little bass heavy, then that's my kind of my target volume for finishing my mix. Um, and, uh, and I just use the meter to make, you know, the peaks are up at zero. And the RMS is usually on a finished mix, but at, let me back up. During the loudest section of my finished mix, this meter will tell me sit between usually minus eights or a pretty good range, minus seven sometimes if you want to push it a bit. You can go a little bit louder if you want. Um, okay. Da, da, da. Uh, that's what I didn't get to, how he's mastering of side effects. That is so fucking dope. Um, I may have to do that separately. Uh, okay, plowing on. I, I don't think I have everything in the mix yet. Yep. No, I've got to work on this uh, bridge with the quickness. I never meant to be your ghost Settle down, dig your grave I never meant to be your Hold me close, keep me far I never meant to be your ghost Settle down, dig your grave I never meant to be your Hold me close, keep me far. I never meant to be your ghost. Settle down, dig your grave. I never meant to be your. Hold me close, keep me far. I never meant to be your ghost. Settle down, dig your grave. I never meant to be your Hold me close, keep me far I never meant to be your ghost Settle down, dig your grave I never meant to be your Hold me close, keep me far I never meant to be your ghost Settle
Okay, so we started with a four and a half minute song. Now it starts at 28 seconds and it ends at just over three minutes. So now we have a three minute song cut down from four and a half. Even now I'm producing under two minutes sometimes, uh, two and a half. Like the side effects of Scene Stealer single we just put out is 2.35 um, and Danger was like 1.45. So just, you know, food for thought when you're arranging shit uh, as a newer artist and you are trying to catch ears, you got to get to it. Uh, SR1B asks from the chat roll, hey, Ken, when you're uh, EQing those vocals in solo, do you have the sound of the rest in your head or do you start with something and adjust the context? Usually I never EQ in solo. Um, I'm kind of going stream of consciousness tonight. Uh, I my ears are good enough that I can EQ in solo and I know exactly what it's going to sound like when I pop it back in. Um, you guys should not EQ in solo any more than you have to. When you need to do surgery, when you hear a problem and you've identified it, solo it, fix the problem, put it back in. Um, but if you're just trying to mix and balance and carve space for it in the mix, uh, keep it in the mix and EQ while all of the other music is going because this is mixing and you've got to find those sweet spots that, you know, this frequency really brings out the vocal enunciation nicely and that frequency is too muddy and if you cut that, it clears it up a little bit. You just got to play against everything else that's happening in the mix because if you mute that bass guitar, all of a sudden all that low end in the vocal is going to be like way too much, but put the bass back in and it swallows up a lot of that low end. So everything is just a different, you got to assess as you go, which is the challenge of mixing. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I've almost got, no, what the, oh, there's more. Jeez. Holy crap. Wow. Well, all right, let's. Ah, I see. Okay. Some of these are bridge things. Hold me close. Keep me far. I never meant to be your... Hold me close. Keep me to be Far. I never meant 
Uh, Large Minds from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, do you have any experience with a Neumann TLM-102? No, but I gotta tell you, I very much dislike the 103. Um, if you haven't heard the EL, the Ericsson the EL-800, it's probably not in your price range, but my God, what a microphone. Sometimes I really like this Kush UBK-1 on real attacky acoustics that I want to keep the attack, but I just want to smooth them out a little bit. It's probably a fairly slow release, real slow attack. It's kind of like a medium release. This is a tilt. I'm it all it's doing is tilting a little bit of the bass off and adding a little bit of the high end. It's just a kind of an EQ rebalance. So when the guitar is a little bit too woofy and I need a little bit more brightness, boom, tilt. All right, everything is in and fairly balanced. Uh, I'm just gonna start working on the mix bus because we're almost out of time. Usually I have way more head, oh, that's why.
Okay, so this is just kind of like a coloring box. Um, I tend to check out Rock Anarchy and see how it sounds. Usually it just gives me a little bit more presence. Usually the the in the way it instantiates is a little bit too bright and, and aggressive on the top, so I dial back the air amount. If you got enough high end in your mix, you don't need the air, but sometimes it's just like a nice little sparkle. Um, uh, other things do the same thing. The Verimu, uh, I use my analog uh, outboard Verimu is set the exact same way and does the exact same thing. Uh, and it's just a super slow attack, super slow release. And it lets all of the transient punch through and then clamps down and just holds it down for the entire thing. And I don't really understand fully how it works, but it is like a super glue box. When, whenever somebody says, you know, glue compression, brr, glue, this is, this is a glue box. Um, it glues shit together for me. So, and it makes your transitions so much easier to mix, like coming in and out of choruses and bridges and things like that, where you get your verse sounding great and your chorus sounding great, but they don't, the verse is too low and the chorus is too loud and they don't segue together. And the, this is a problem solver for a lot of that shit. Um, then often I'm using the master desk kind of for my last kind of adjustment squeeze. One of the things I like about the master desk is the foundation. It's a tilt, uh, tilts brighter or darker. Um, so it's kind of your last like gut check. Do I have enough high end? Is it too bassy? Whatever. Da, da. Um, and then this has got a de -esser built into it. Um, so listen to just the de -esser grabbing some of the uh, sibilances. So one more thing I'm going to do on the master desk, I'm going to turn the output down and give myself some headroom. And I'm, uh, I really like the sound of this limiter, so I'm going to put the limiter in, um, and then I'm going to put another limiter after it. This time, because I'm using the plug-in alliance thing, I'm going to use the FabFilter Pro L2. I like this thing. Um, and I'll make sure my output level is at least 0.1, minus 0.1. That gives you enough headroom on streaming, uh, so that you don't distort on streaming. Oversampling, usually when I'm printing passes, uh, because this computer is really fast, I'm setting this shit at 32. Uh, when I'm working, usually this can go 16, but since, uh, since we're streaming right now, and I don't know how, uh, I'm going to leave the oversampling off, but I usually have oversampling crank, and, and we'll just go transparent for now. And all I'm doing with this is pushing it up until I get the loudness end result in my loudest chorus on the FGX, which I'm probably looking at like minus minus nine, minus eight with this. It is the Pro L2, I literally only use it for volume. It sounds like my same mix, just a little bit turned up. Yeah, it squeezes it a little bit, but really you don't, you don't press it. It's just kind of a volume box. And then when I deliver to mastering, I deliver it with and without the Pro L2. And if I've really pushed the master desk, I'll ease off on that. And I'll give them a, like a my final that I approved or my client approved. And then I'll give them an uncompressed with the limiters off so that uh, the mastering, like a guy like Howie Weinberg can dig in and fucking murder this shit like he did with side effects. Man, I wish I had time to play the side effects thing. <laughs> We should man. I'll, I'm gonna play it hopefully next time. Howie, God, he's just so musical too. I mean, it got like louder and more present, but it's just so. You just listen to it and you go like, that's the fucking song right there. Uh, anyway, thank you, Howie. Um, so I think I pretty much have covered damn near everything I can cover. Uh, if you have any more questions, fire away on the chat roll. But you see, most of mixing is just balance, balance, balance. Fine, you know, I've done a lot of editing here, so I've cut a four and a half minute song down to three, uh, three minutes and a couple seconds. 
um, and really made it much more concise for, you know, a first time listener who doesn't know who this artist is can really just go like, oh, shit, I'm in it. You don't lose the attention. It ebbs and flows. It has dynamics to it. Um, everything is, you know, solid. Let you know, just play it through parts of the mix. Quick release, and we're right back in it. All right, and then, you know, the bridge. You, you guys get the sense of it. Um, all right, so I'm going to pack this in, and I'm going to play the Brian Pepin segment, and then we're going to call it a night. Um, but uh, uh, thank you for hanging out on, on Mixing Night with me. Rory, you murdered the production on this. You know, I, you, you need to tighten up the arrangement, but the recording, the everything, the... Vocal delivery, you, I think um, everything is fucking great. The work that you're doing at the age you're doing it is is very impressive. Um, so uh, we, you and I can kind of finish this up off uh, off camera um, in the coming week and make sure that you get what you want. Or if you hate it, you can do your own. Uh, anyway, uh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna save and close that. And do I have Brian Pe Brian Pepin? So I'm going to close the show with Brian Pepin. Uh, Brian won one of our beat challenges, uh, and it was sponsored by Universal Audio. And Brian won a Universal Volt 2 interface. Uh, this is a Universal Audio, uh, an SD1 mic. I love this for a broadcast mic. Um, okay, so here's Brian Pepin to close the show. Thanks for hanging out with us on Mixing Night. This is Ken Lewis, and uh, I'll say goodbye before the end, but, you know. Hey there, Mixing Night Audio. This is Brian Pepin from Hyderabad in India, and I am a director, producer, uh, and I do TV content uh, primarily for uh, South Indian regional TV stations. Uh, I produce nonfiction, and I do uh, game shows and reality shows and the likes. So I uh, have also been a part of this Mixing Night community for the last two years, and it's been a phenomenal you know, experience for me. And uh, one such experience was when I won a UA uh, Universal Audio Volt 2 uh, interface, and that's replaced my uh, my Focusrite Scarlett 212. Uh, and I thought I'll just take you through my small setup, which is hardly anything really. But yeah, so this is uh, my central unit, which is my new. I, I updated this one too from a 2016 MacBook Pro. This is the uh, 2021. M1 Max chip with 64 GBs of RAM and 2 TB of hard disk, which is uh, like a dream machine for me. Uh, I have this small control surface, uh, which is the exception from Behringer. Uh, I'm running the Keylab 61 N uh, MK2 MIDI keyboard, and this. Monitors are the Kali Audio LP6. Uh, this is the centerpiece, the one that I was talking to you about, which I which I won recently, and it's the Volt 2. It's a brilliant unit. I think the one, if there's one advantage over my Focusrite, it has a power button, and that really makes a big difference. I think uh, also it kind of uh, just pushes a little more output, which is great. And to beat it all, this is a one-off unit because it's personally hand-signed by uh, the man himself, Ken. 
uh, thank you for you know I mean everything that you've done for us in this mixing night community and to everyone that's uh, you know been a part of this community for the longest time guys you are the best uh, all the best to you and whatever you do and uh, hope to see you soon in the next P challenges yeah good night Brian Pepin, man, Brian has been just slaying the beat challenges. He is, oh, he always throws down something amazing. To close the show, I'm just going to give a whole bunch of shout outs to people who have been really important to me this month. Um, of course, uh, shout out to Lori Lewis, the best wife in the entire world. I've got her, you don't, sorry. Uh, you know, she works so hard on all the graphics for the show. Uh, there's so much behind the scenes, and I think she's feeding me questions on the chat roll tonight. Big shout out to Lori Don. Tom Ravinius, man, our partner in crime and mixing night. Dom is a class act. He's hanging in L.A. right now. Uh, look him up. Steve Nathan, the congrats on the Mediflix, uh, the Heart of St. Michael's show. And thank you so much for licensing Oxygen for the end of uh, episode two. I love that usage. Rika Boomgarden wrote that with me, the top line with me. Ann Mincelli and Jungle City Studios. Ann Mincelli, what can you even say about one of the goats of the music industry? Uh, that woman's gonna go down in history. The shit she that's amazing. And Jungle City, like last time I worked at Jungle City was several years ago for, on Kanye West, so that tells you the level of that studio. Um, who else? Ken Pooch Van Druten. Ken Van Druten is currently front of house for Iron Fucking Maiden. Holy shit, I grew up listening to Iron Maiden. I love those guys. And they're still touring, being total badasses. So uh, Pooch has invited me out um, to a show soon, so I'm going to connect with him out on tour and go see a little uh, run to the hills from Iron Maiden. And hopefully I get to uh, be in the, the front of house mix booth for some of the show and get to see Pooch work. Ah! I'm going to totally nerd out. Uh, thank you to uh, Nolan Monogold holding it down this week around here. Uh, great to have you around. More shout outs to Mike Dizzle, Christo Santillas, Chris Lee, Brian Pepin, Steve Erickson, Langston Massingale, Big Lou, Bob Horn, Chris Howard, Jeremy Locke, uh, Eric Iverson, uh, Ken Bodiger over at Dolby, uh, Hero at 360, Angelo Dodaro, uh, Ricky Carson, Jessica Cole, Talk, uh, Chris Martin, uh, Nick Furlong, Decibel and the Boom, Michael Hammer, Dylan Wissing, DJ Burn One, and Sylvia, sorry, Cindy De Silva. It has been a hell of a month. My God, I've been working with so many people this month. Uh, this is Ken Lewis. Thank you for joining us for another great mixing night. Uh, and we will be back in uh, November. I will see you then. I'm going to be at AES. Um, if anybody's going to be in AES New York, find me on the floor. I'll be wandering around there. Until then, have a great mixing night. Me and Mazakeen Lewis uh, wish you adieu. Good night.